Did you know that four out of five people who build workflows in Slack consider themselves to be non-technical? It must be pretty easy. Let's find out. Welcome back to Slack School. My name is Mike Reynolds. I'm part of the Slack team here at Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be talking about workflow. Of course, I'm talking about Slack workflow and not Salesforce workflow. Nobody cares about those rules anymore. Slack workflow is a great tool. It gives you forms where you can collect information or gives you some other opportunities to just automatically make things happen. It's very intuitive and easy to use. That's why four out of five people who use workflow consider themselves to be non-technical. It's really pretty easy. So instead of spending a bunch of time talking about it, let's just get into it. Remember, you can follow along in your own environment. Everything that we go through today is gonna happen all inside of Slack. So a sandbox in your slack.dev is gonna be perfect. Today, we're gonna be building a simple workflow that you can do on your own. So pull up your slack.dev, jump into a sandbox and build along with me. This workflow is gonna allow you to come into the Slack community and submit an episode idea or give episode feedback. So here's how we're gonna do this. I can get to workflow by clicking this plus and choosing workflow. There's a couple other ways to do it, but I'm gonna do create a workflow. We can of course have AI do this for us, but that is too easy. So we have to choose an event. How do I wanna start the workflow? There's a lot I could say about this, but I'll be here all day. So we're gonna choose this top option from a link in Slack. You can also make these buttons. It makes it pretty easy. We'll click continue here. Now, I need to add, um, first off, a field that's just going to you know, pop up a form and say, are you giving me feedback or are you giving me an idea? So let's do that now. We're going to collect info in a form. We have to give this a title. And we can be uh, really simple here, feedback or idea. And then we need to add a question. It won't be a short answer. We're going to use a drop down. And this will be, we can just again, feedback or idea. And we have to choose options for the drop down menu. Again, this is going to be episode feedback. And we just hit enter to get a new line. And then we'll say episode idea. And here I can just choose done. I don't need a default option here. We'll, we'll make our users choose. Uh, so this is a very simple form, just asking one question. After that, I wanna go and present two separate forms depending on what they choose. And I do that with a branch. It's suggesting branch here. I can also go find it by coming up here in the menu. And uh, my favorite thing about Slack workflows, all of the ideas it gives you in all of its menus, they're all real, they all make sense and they all work. Uh, so I'm gonna choose this episode idea first. We'll give this branch a name. We'll call this the idea branch. Oops, call that the idea branch. We'll make this one blue, click save. And so now I'm in my idea branch. I can add another branch right now. Uh, we'll make this the feedback branch. And we'll make that green just because colors are great. So I now have a branch for ideas and a branch for feedback. We'll start with the idea branch. I'll add a step here. Um, now I need to find out what the idea is. We know it is an idea, so let's see what it is. We'll do collect info in a form and I'll call this the idea form. And we'll do a couple questions here. And I'm just gonna do two questions. We'll make this short and sweet. We'll say, uh, the question is the tagline. Uh, give us a quick overview. And we'll keep the short answer. We'll make, mark it as required and then add another question. Um, and we'll just say, tell us the whole idea. And instead of short answer, I'm going to choose the rich text composer. Uh, I think that looks really nice. And then we'll say done here. So now here's my form, which is very simple. Give us a tagline, tell us the whole idea, and then uh, we'll hit save. So now workflow knows that you wanted an idea and you've told us the tagline, which is a short thing. And then you've given us a longer description of what the idea is. So let's build a nice channel message. I'm going to change this to, we got a new idea. 
it's nice that it, it gave us this information, but uh, that's not everything that I want. I don't need all of that. Uh, but I will say uh, React with, uh, I really love this uh, Slack love animated emoji. Uh, we'll say, ooh, how about if you love this idea as much as we do? We'll start out with this. This is just taking that tagline and putting it in the channel for everybody to see. And it did default to the channel where the workflow is used. Now, uh, folks are going to be using this in our Slack School channel, but I don't want them to accidentally use it somewhere else. So I'm going to specify that no matter how they get to this, we're always going to be posting into Slack School. So we'll save that. And now, uh, I really like when you're asking people to respond with an emoji, if you put the emoji there so they don't have to hunt for it. So let's do that. Uh, I can go to messages and then I have add a reaction to the message. And I'm going to choose the message that was sent. And I'm going to select an emoji. I'm just going to look for Slack love. That's what this emoji is called. And then hit save. So now I've posted the tagline and reacted to it with the emoji. I need to thread underneath that main message that we've created with their long form description of everything. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to messages and then reply to message in thread. And again, if I choose this, I've, I've only got one option and it's the only one that makes sense. The message that was sent in the reply, we're just going to choose here. Tell us the whole idea. So it's giving me a whole lot of options here, but there's only one that makes sense. And it's this, uh, tell us the whole idea. It's not the only one that made sense. All of those things might've made sense, but this is the one we want. And now I'm just gonna choose save. So now if I take a step back and look at this, I started out by saying, tell me what you wanna do. Is this feedback or is it an idea? If you choose idea, then I say, okay, give me the tagline and give me a long form description. And then beneath that, I post your tagline with the idea to, hey, react to this if you'd like. So I go ahead and react to it. And then after that, I thread in the longer description of what the idea was. Really like that. It's nice and simple. Everybody will be able to see it and follow along. Now this next one, if it's feedback, I don't necessarily want the feedback to be public. I might need to be able to process that feedback because if you tell me that I'm terrible at this, I, I need to know that by myself. Oh. So let's collect info in a form. We'll say, give us your feedback. And the question here, we'll keep this really similar. Tagline, get us your thoughts. And we'll keep that a short answer and we'll add another question, uh, your feedback. And we'll make that rich text as well and choose done and save. Now I have the feedback. But I don't want this feedback to go in Slack School. I want it to go in a separate channel that is private so that my boss knows what everybody thinks about me. So I'm going to choose this channel message again. And here I'm going to specify Slack School feedback as the channel. So all of your feedback is going to go into a separate location here. And um, we'll do a very similar thing. So we'll we'll take this part out and just say the, uh, the uh, we'll say we have new feedback. We'll put that here and save. And then we will uh, we'll also thread in the main part. So uh, reply to message in thread. Uh, we'll say the message that was sent. And you'll note here this time, it's it doesn't include the other branched message, which is kind of nice. It's simplifying things for me. I do need to insert a variable again. And we'll go back to... Uh, your feedback, and you'll notice the other the other options, the other forms options are just not here because it wouldn't make sense to reference them. It's a, it's a really nice way of of keeping things nice and succinct. So this is this is a really simple way for me to make sure that all of that feedback is going to be posted to a feedback channel so that I can look at it. That was it. We do need to publish though. So let's step through that. I'm going to click this finish up button. Uh, we'll give this a workflow. We'll call it Slack School Feedback. And uh, we do need a good description here. So we'll call this Slack School Feedback or ep 
episode idea. And everyone in the community can use it. It's going to look like this. And so we'll hit publish. And I actually want to make sure that this gets published into the channel that I used it at. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to home. And here inside my Slack School channel, I can go back up to the top, click the plus, and choose Workflow. And then here, I want to find that Slack School feedback. So here's my Slack School feedback workflow. And I'll just choose Add. So now, when you go into the Slack community and you go to this channel, you'll see a Workflows tab with Slack School feedback. So let's hit Play. And uh, here, is it a feedback or an idea? Let's say it's an idea. So I'll hit Submit. Now I'm going to get that second form here. The first one gives the, the tagline. I'm going to say, um, how about you do an episode on workflow with Salesforce flow? Doesn't have to be a good demo, just a demo, right? All my demos are good. So I've got that. I click submit. Now we know what should happen. I should get a message, post it here in the channel, and I should have an emoji reaction to it, and it should thread in my description. Here I can see all of that happened. I can click on this, and I've got that further response. So this is really nice. If I actually like the idea, I can also choose to react like that. So let's test it again and give it some feedback. Uh, this time we need to choose episode feedback. We'll click submit. I should get another form. And let's see here. Mike talks too fast. This is good feedback. So I'll click submit. So now I should see in my Slack School feedback channel that I have a new unread message. So let's go check that out. I can see it here. It says, Mike talks too fast. That's what I said. And when I view this, I've got it here. And you'll notice that both of these, I didn't actually say who said it. So this is a nice way of giving anonymous feedback. I could go back and edit the workflow, but this is nice. It's letting me know everything that I need to know, and it's doing exactly what I want. So there you have it. So how'd it go for you? Now you can let me know. Jump into the Slack community and then use the workflow that I just built. It's literally right there. It's available for you. Go ahead and use it. Give me some episode feedback or an idea on what you want to see us do next. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Oh, hey, you did a really good job today. And action. Let us know how it works for you. And blah, 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 blah. That's just what I talk like, by the way, when.